What's up everybody? My name is Tiffany. And Brian. And we are Finding the Foresters. So welcome to our channel. If this is your first time, we are a traveling couple and a traveling family. We have a son and we travel very often internationally, near, far, cruise, car, you name it. If you're interested in some of the places that we've been, take a look at our channel and some of the playlists and check us out. Um, for this video, we are going to focus on one of our recent cruises on the Carnival Magic. So if you want to know more about that, stay tuned. We won't really get into what we thought about each port. However, if you're interested in such a video, let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to record that for you. In this video, we're going to focus on what we thought about this ship itself. Um, and if you are looking to go on the Carnival Magic soon, this may be useful to see if it's a good ship fit for you. And um, we'll share you, with you our thoughts about kind of traveling during spring break as well, because that's when we took the cruise. So first we want to get into the layout of the ship. We definitely thought it was easy to navigate. Uh, first getting on the ship, of course, it takes you time to get acclimated to the ship and find out where things are. Um, so for example, with the Serenity deck, um, we know that was towards the front of the ship. Also, the, the Serenity deck is right above the spa, and it's also right above, the, which is above the theater. So if you're an adult, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to experience the rest of this ship, or you don't want to deal with kids, anything like, anything like that, you can literally stay on that front end of the ship. You know, if you want to do the Serenity stuff, if you have a spa book, if you got a show you want to go to, you can literally be in that front part of the ship, you know, to go anywhere else. So we thought that was good. Um, the Serenity deck also had some secluded areas to enter um you could go right walk past through the spa and then there's a little elevator that takes you up through there you can actually see you know inside the spa and see the workers and see the uh the jacuzzis and things of that nature so um we thought it was a nice touch on that part of, of that side of things one thing i will add though about the serenity deck that we did notice they did have jacuzzis or hot tubs i forgot what they called them um but they close really early so <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's worth it to Dean Carnival Magic specifically. That may be the time that they close it in general across Carnival ships. I'm not sure. I can't really remember the times yeah. that they close on other ships that we've been on. But that was something that we wish they would have extended the hours. You know, adults might want to be there a little longer. I think. Well, I, 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 feel was like, I feel like it was like 8 p.m. or something like that. Oh, I thought it was earlier. I, I can't remember the exact time. I felt like it was like 7 or 6 mm -hmm. or something like that. But... I can't remember it exactly because we're recording this a little bit later, but all I know is on the ship, we weren't happy about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I mean, whatever every, time it was, we wanted it to be later. <laughs> everything was shut down. There was no bar. The jacuzzi was shut off. Like, there was nobody up there. I mean, yeah. it could be a part because, you know, we were on spring break. Maybe that could be yeah. a factor. Let but, us know. If you've but, been to the Serenity on the Carnival Magic, see if... Did it close early for you too? And when he says bar, the bars on the ship were open, but the, there were separate bars in the Serenity deck, and those were closed. So it's like if you wanted to have adult only time after dinner, you couldn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, you couldn't go to the Serenity deck then and just have a, a drink where no kids would be around or, you know, relaxing. Yeah. Nothing like that. Being in the hot tub under the stars, you can't do any of that. Um, and they probably do that for certain reasons to kind of just deter people from doing things but come on give can we have till 10 i don't know um anyway so the next thing we thought was good about the layout is they had really nice smoking sections so this doesn't apply to everyone if you don't smoke well it kind of does apply to everyone because they had separate smoking sections so if you don't smoke you know what sections to avoid and if you do smoke um then they had several of them i think it was like four that we noticed um and we're not counting the casino we're talking about kind of on the was it 11th deck yeah. i think it was the 11th deck. they had two in the in the aft and two in the front and cushioned seats umbrellas near the edge of the ship so you can kind of get the breeze and see the water mm -hmm. um they give you the ashtrays mm -hmm. and so i thought that was really well thought out that they gave a nice section for you know those that like to have a cigar or something on on the cruise you know no weed y'all but you know, if you want to have a quick smoke, they I made definitely smoke weed on the trip. So. I mean, yeah, somebody was was, was uh, sneaking it up there, but yeah. Also about the layout, we noticed that they have two separate casinos. One were one was on the I think the fifth floor, and the other one was on the fourth floor of the ship. So um, 
the bigger one that was on the fifth floor, uh, that was the smoking, that was smoking, you could eat a lot of smoke and things like that. It had a little bit more tables and a little bit more action, just, you know, just a lot more that you would expect out of a basic casino. Um, the fourth floor one was a little more quiet, less tables, um, no, not smoking. Um, they did have a bar there, if I recall. They did. Mm -hmm. They did, um, and some slots and things like that. So, you know, in case you want to still gamble, but you don't want to have, you know, somebody next to you smoking or get that smoke in your face or in your hair or whatever case is on your clothes, um, definitely having two casinos is a good option for, the, for those individuals who, who don't want to experience, whoever, whatever experience you want to go with, um, definitely good that they had that option. Yeah, I mean, they're going to they're gonna dedicate more resources to wherever they're making the most money. And, you know, they've seen that the smoking areas are going to make the most money. So that one's still, like Brian said, it's more lively, it's bigger, um, it's more in the middle of things and the action. But at least they are being thoughtful and trying to provide another option for people that don't want to be around that. And he said there was less. So to give you an idea, I think there was like one roulette table. Yeah, Definitely one, maybe like maybe one like two eight, blackjacks. ten slots machines. No, it's more than that. We don't really play them, so yeah, I don't we don't play some. It, it, it was a decent amount. It was probably half of the amount. Yeah, that definitely was on the, the fifth deck. Yeah, yeah, definitely half. Um, just looking at our notes to make sure we have got through everything about layout. Oh, the kids club. You want to talk about kids club location? Uh, I thought the kids club location was very was a good location. Um, it was like right in the middle of the boat. Uh, I think the Lido deck was deck 10 mm -hmm. and the kids club was on deck 11. So essentially, if you're at the main pool, which is on the Digo, and you know, the Red Run Bar is over there, Blue Iguana is over there, uh, Guy's Burger, all right there. If you walk up the stairs to the next level, that's the kids club literally right there. So, you know, that's where most of the families and most of the entertainment takes place when you're on the cruise ship anyway. If you're outside, then just, you know, walk up the stairs and <laughs> get easy access to the kids club is a perfect perfect spot to put it i know some places are a little bit in the front of the ship some other crews have them in front of the ship but we thought the middle of the ship in a common area was probably a really good location to get to yeah um and then just one last thought as we wrap up layout and move to the next category some ships you might find that are easy to navigate because they're really small the reason we're mentioning easy to navigate for carnival magic is because it's not a small ship it's not the largest mm -hmm. ship um, but it's not a small ship. It's still a big ship. And so I just thought that the layout and the planning in terms of what people may need to have access to before or after they do a certain activity, I think that a lot of planning went into that with the Carnival Magic. Um, it's, a little, it's, it's getting a little outdated, but we'll move into that next. That's a, that's a perfect segue to the next category, which is decor and rooms. So Carnival Magic, like I said, it's not an old ship. It's, it's on the newer side, but it's not a new ship. So they've had a few ships that have come out since Carnival Magic. But if you look at all of the Carnival ships like lined up, it's on the newer side. Um, but it's still old enough where it did not make it to when Carnival <laughs> decided to up Change the up. decor. Yeah. So you're still going to see the outdated decor. And by outdated, I mean both outdated in terms of wear and tear and outdated in terms of like the traditional flashy busy carnival decor magic still has that some people really love that and some people like us don't prefer that so if you really love that you're gonna have it on the magic we prefer more of a kind of a modern yeah like a modern like a pastel colors yeah or, I, mean, or yeah, I can do with different colors but i don't like we don't like the busy it's just kind of clunky, of flashy decor. Something that's kind of making me want to relax, stuff like that. So we looked at it as a con, but I know some people love the traditional decor. So you might look at that as a pro. In terms of decor, we also want to talk about the room. So the room, again, is it did not make it to when Carnival pivoted and started to change the layout of the room. So the room, the decor is still pretty outdated. Um, I, it, it was really dusty. <laughs> and they okay it was really dusty um it's not a lot of storage in the room so you know how the newer ships they were more thoughtful about storage they were more thoughtful about outlets and plugs you're not going to have that on the magic i mean they may refurbish it at some point in time so you know depending on when you're watching this but as of 2023 it was still little storage um little outlets and plugs and stuff like that yeah bathroom was your 
Oh, out of date. Still <laughs> have the shower curtain. Still got the shower curtain over there. The little zip line that goes across <laughs> to hang your stuff up, and you know the the little uh, shelves in the bathroom on, on the mirror and things like that. So yeah, it's nothing nothing to wow you about. If you've been on an older ship or whatever, you're gonna it's pretty much pretty much the same thing. The balconies are the same essentially. Um, and that's a whole other thing. I think Carnival can do better with yeah, their balconies in general, balconies. even on the newer ships. Like they, they, they need longer yeah, balconies. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so now we're starting off with food. I thought the food was pretty good. Um, we had sushi. If you saw in our vlog, we took you know a, a video of us eating food and showed the pictures of it and things like that. Um, thought it was excellent. It was really, sushi was really good. good. Yeah, sushi was really good. The only thing about that we found was kind of odd is that. For it to be, like you said, one of the not really a newer ship, but like a middle newer, uh, uh, like he's on the newer side, on the yeah. newer side of things. Um, they didn't have a sushi restaurant, and we've been on older ships that have a sit down sushi restaurant. Yeah, like so we don't know why they decided on the magic itself to not have a sit down sushi restaurant. Yeah, it was more like you um, order and then you take it to go. What yeah. and the other ships we've been on, they actually have like little. Um, stools and tables, tables around that you can actually sit there and like even the um the decor with the sushi bar matched like the, the outside yeah. tables and stuff like that so it was like what even though it was like not no walls to cut it off but it still looked like seamless like it was a you know it was together like a yeah. restaurant right but yeah. they didn't have that there which is fine um but at the same it time it wasn't the end of the world yeah. but we did want to kind of just sit yeah and I mean, we we still got to see the sushi. Yeah, we had to go by the the alchemy bar. Right? <laughs> yeah, we had to like, go but, find another seat. Yeah, but the food, sushi was good. They only had like four options, but you know, oh yeah, that's true. But, they didn't uh, have as many options. But they had and, and they had some other sashimi. Yeah, sashimi, sushi, four like four rolls, and mm -hmm. one was a California roll. So they really just had three rolls, and I think that no, and they had um. Oh, the name is escaping me. I'll put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what yeah. the what the other item was called. I can't remember. It's on the tip of my tongue. But good sushi, those little four rolls that they had, they perfected them now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they yeah, really yeah. did that. But right. and they also had another option. You could do it to go. Or you can order and have it delivered to your um table in the dining room as you're having dinner. But for me, if I chose to go to the dining room, I didn't choose in this again, this is just us. If I'm at the dining room, I'm not choosing to pay for my dinner. Mm -hmm. Like, if I go there, I'm the person that's going to select from the options that are included in the cruise. Mm -hmm. If I choose to pay for an option for dinner where I'm paying out of pocket, I'm likely not going to be in the main dining room. I'm going to mm -hmm. be at whatever that mm -hmm. restaurant is, whether it's me going to the seafood shack or whether it's going to the steakhouse. Whatever it is, I'm going to do that separately. I'm not going to order sushi and pay for it while I'm eating amongst the free. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah. some people do it. I mean, people order it. Mm -hmm. But food in the in the in the main dining area, um, it was it was okay. It was good. I mean, it's, nothing really stood out to us. Nothing really was bad. It was it was it wasn't decent. Bad. It wasn't like groundbreaking. It was it was you know. Yeah, it was food. average. Um, the brunch, the sea day brunch, we mainly did that on those sea days. I I got a bowl to pick the carnival. I don't, and I'm not gonna blame this on the magic because I don't know. This is just my. Like we've been on enough cruises on Carnival, we're gold. So we're not speaking on the experience of just going mm -hmm. on this cruise and one other Carnival cruise. Um, one of my favorite sea day brunch items is huevos rancheros. <laughs> I don't know who told them to change how they make it. Now, I don't know if this is a change Carnival made or if they just didn't have all the ingredients they needed <laughs> on the Magic, but they didn't make it right and I'm mad about it. And I don't like that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. like that. Like, they tried to put some diced up chicken thighs <laughs> as the meat. And it's supposed to be chorizo. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... It, it, was, it was diced yeah. up chicken thighs. It's supposed to be chorizo. That don't taste the same. It don't. And it didn't taste flavor. the same. A little bit flavor. Yeah. I'm going to call the carnival authorities by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but all the other stuff, y'all know, like the Blue Agana, good. Yeah, it was good. Uh, Guy's Burger. We was crushing that the whole time. It was good. <laughs> Per um, usual. Pizza was was average. I mean, it was good off the late night. Um, and they do have um, Pig and Anchor, yeah, but they, they're good. not new enough to have the Shaq's Big, big Chicken. So yeah. if you're looking for Shaq's Big Chicken, it's not on the Carnival Magic, or at least it wasn't up there as of 2023. Yeah, Pig and Anchor, Pig, Pig and Anchor was pretty good, too. I think Pig um, and Anchor is okay, but I think that on any ship. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've had better barbecue, but. Um, yeah. The bars were, were, were decent. Um, I just feel like, if this goes probably with any type of bar you go to, I feel like a lot of places just need to either train their bartenders up a little bit more or whatever because I feel like we, we order those rum punches and like he's still mad about that I'm still annoyed but like how do you have two different types of flavors of rum punch that that never I ordered the same drink and both of them taste drastically different yeah and you know it was no consistency with yeah you like finding a drink you like and then knowing that where you were on the ship the they were gonna make it the same way right so yeah unless you just get beer or something everywhere you or, go that's all yeah. or rum and coke or whatever you drink but yeah um the bars were cool uh red rum was cool um alchemy we didn't we didn't really drink much we alchemy tried to packed. yeah we yeah. tried to but they didn't have a lot of seating at alchemy <laughs> like they need to increase the seating they had alchemy was situated right in front of one of the um performance stages. performance stages so that was nice but it wasn't that many stools at the bar and mm -hmm. then they really weren't being sticklers about making sure kids weren't at the bar yeah. so like kids would be at two seats <laughs> yeah. move Please, which leads us to our, our final thing, which is just giving you our thoughts on cruising during spring break. Speaking yeah. of kids. Overall, it was cool. I think it was cool for us because we know how to manage our expectations on what we decide to do. So we're the type of people where if we know that we're going on vacation during spring break, we're not going to be complaining about it being packed or something. We're going to notice it, yeah. but we're not going to sit up there and be complaining a lot because we know we chose to cruise during spring break Don't or if we people. chose to go to Disney during a certain, you know, so we, we know how to manage our expectations, but it was packed. Yeah. It was packed. I mean, <laughs> jacuzzis look like swimming pools <laughs> and like our room was right over, right above a jacuzzi. So you would look down and just see like a bunch of kids just, I mean, dunk going underneath the wall. This doing this, <laughs> doing stuff you're not supposed to do in jacuzzi. Like y'all dunking, y'all supposed to be in a ten minute match. They in there for about an hour. You know what I'm saying? Lord knows they get overheated. You know, because the pool they treat the, the they treat the, the hot tub like a regular pool. Yeah, because all the other pools were were packed with capacity. So it's yeah. like let's let's find another place and yeah and do their thing. Um, like she was saying, lines were long. We already knew that was the situation. Um, at night. Kids get a little crazy when they get a little bored. They're running up and down. And by kids, we're not really necessarily talking about the younger ones, but those that are probably like... Probably teenagers. Teenagers yeah. that parents are okay with them going around the ship by themselves. And they just be real excited about their independence, just yeah. doing silly stuff. Running up and down the hallways, <laughs> knocking on people's doors. And Pushing all the buttons. Yeah. And a, you know, and silly, all, yeah, silly all the kids buttons stuff. on the escalator, elevator. We didn't experience... You know, people knocking on our door and things like that. But we definitely, I definitely heard a couple of times people walking up, running up and down, or just you know, it being sort of loud at the like eleven, twelve midnight or whatever the case is. Just, you know, you just hear people, people being up and doing anything. So, and we're just mentioning this because normally when we go on cruises, we'll join the Facebook group that's on there just to kind of chat, and then we kind of leave it once when the cruise is over. So we just saw a lot of people, not a lot of people. I won't. That's the train. Some people were really unhappy and complaining a lot about that. So just to keep in mind, you know, this is not Carnival Magic specific, but we did want to mention it. Um, if you're considering cruising during spring break or another busy time, just keep that in mind with your, you know, your cruise planning. Um, I think that wraps up our thoughts on the magic. Do you have anything else to share in the magic? Uh, no, not really. Um, at this point, like I said, we've experienced cruising. For a good amount of time, a good amount, of, yeah, a good amount of time. So, I think the next time we go on the cruise, want to <laughs> bump it up to the next. Yeah, we want to go on a new, a new on, on a newer ship. Um, the thing about it is, you, it's just a, it's a, a more of a commitment. Like they don't have, unfortunately, the ports that we're closest to, we never get the newest ships. Yeah. So you have to go out of Florida or New Orleans or something like that, which is not crazy but it just adds an additional cost to the whole equation our general thoughts about the magic was it was an okay ship i mean no, nothing was drastically bad about it but i think we've reached our capacity for like the older looking ships even if they are on the newer side of carnival 
we're, we're over the older older ship, so we're probably going to go <laughs> on a newer one. Yeah. We're going to wrap this up, but if you have any more questions that we did not address about the Carnival Magic specifically or any of the ports we went to, which are Grand Turk, Half Moon Key, and Amber Cove, Dominican Republic, let us know. We'll be happy to answer your questions or do a video more about that. I will link the playlist to Carnival Magic series below. I mean, we'll also probably lump all those um, videos together and put it up as one big series as well for people that like to, a longer vlog versus people that want to watch it day by day. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. Let us know if you've been on the magic and what you thought about it. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.